Excellent. So I have a few friends with me today, but first I want to welcome them, welcome them all to the stage. We have the cast of My Hero Academia. Let's bring them on out, my friends. Come on out. Excellent. We've got the we've got a bunch of cast members today. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves once they sit down at the table. We do have their names written on cards right here, so find your places. Excellent. Very cool, very cool. Did we get the seating right? I hope yeah, so. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Excellent. So we'll go down the table, right starting right this here is... with my first friend, Christopher. Started off my sir, my good sir. Hi, my name is Christopher Sabat, and I uh, am the voice of a guy named All Might in a show called My Hero Academia. Yeah! Yeah! That's what we're talking about! And I'm here. And I am here. <laughs> I'm right here. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is David Matrenga. I voice uh, Shoto Todoroki. In... Thank you. It was also in My Hero Academia. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Monica Rial, but you don't care about that because I voice Suyu Asui. <laughs> Best girl. And I. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Maxwell, and I voice. The R-rated pro hero Midnight in Vigilantes. Oh wait, no, just, just kidding. That's just, just in my heart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, if you know what that sounds like, then you know that I voice uh, number two hero Hot. I was, I didn't. Wait, wait, wait. wait uh, I'm Zeno Robinson. I don't think. I that's what I. That's what I thought. Okay. okay. All right. I'm Ernesto Jason Liebrecht. You might know me as the uh, only representative from the League of Villains here, Dobby the Burnt Boy. <laughs> and I'm Kyle Hebert. You may know me as Batgum. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Batgum. I love you. Yeah. Here. I love Batgum. Batgum Yes. Yeah. Batgum and Fitgum. <laughs> Fitgum. <laughs> Oh man, so we have a fun panel here planned for you guys. Uh, I'm super excited to get into this. I'm, I'm totally geeking out. I've loved all of you guys for so long. I've been watching My Hero since the first episode. So, you want to geek out with me? Let's geek out a little bit. Yeah! Give us a man! Oh, I love it. It's so That's good. Doing. Excellent. So, my friends, uh, I'm going to be starting this off with a few questions of my own, and then uh, we'll trade it over to you guys near the end. Sound good? Cool. Excellent. So uh, let's start it off with a big question. So this is uh, one I've been wanting to ask all of you guys. Um, when you started working on the first episode of the show, obviously some of you guys came in a little bit later, but whenever you guys first started working on My Hero, did you guys kind of feel how big of a thing it was going to be? Like how big of an impact this was going to have like on anime and superhero stuff going forward? We'll just uh, go down the table, whoever wants to answer. Well, it's, I, I guess when we were first working on it, Funimation at that time when we were auditioning, they were like, oh, this is going to be a big show. But Funimation said that a lot in the past. <laughs> like, so we've learned to not get our hopes up, you know what Indeed. I mean? Yep. Uh, but no one could have predicted that it would be as big as this. This is incredible. This is amazing. I knew something special was happening when we went to the first like, Anime Expo and some of the first uh, conventions, and Japanese producers were coming to see us. And it was the first... Like legitimate hand holding I'd seen from any any show I've ever worked on, like from the very beginning. Like I met the people from worked on Dragon Ball years later, but this was right at the start. They were proving wow. the cast and, and they were heavily involved. I knew this was definitely something special to work on. It was awesome. Yeah, I second uh, all of that. I, you know, there was a particular buzz around the studio when this was being cast and when it was being talked about. And just like Chris said, you know, we heard, yeah, it, this has the potential to be, to be, you know, one of the bigger shows. And you kind of, you hear that and you say, that would be amazing, but I'm just going to move on with my day and we'll see what happens. But then, yeah, so I, you know, we ended up, I ended up getting a role in it. And the first season, I remember it being, you know, they took a lot of time to really establish, which I think is amazing, All Might and, and Midoriya's relationship and, and what that was, you know, and they set the foundation for that, which I think paid off really big uh, later on, but it wasn't until I, I remember in season two where 
uh, the sports festival happened and like the whole thing just really caught fire. That's when we, and it, so that's when we started, that's when I first recognized, oh, right, okay, so they weren't wrong, this could be huge. I think for me, it was the first time I went to a convention and Frappy like way outsold Bulma. And I was like, whoa! <laughs> I didn't think this was possible. Dragon Ball's been around for 20 years. This is a brand new show, but Frappy kicked Bulma's butt. <laughs> I, mean, I, I really don't have anything to add. You guys yeah. kind of covered it. It was like we, we had the hope, we had the kind of Funimation thought it was going to be a big deal, and then we were just kind of like, all right, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, my personal like perspective on this is, is kind of a unique one because I came in really late, like late, late in the show, like season like four and the, the movie. So by that time, My Hero Academia was already a phenomenon. So like uh, me working on, I worked on season four first the Shia Saikai. I was uh, Saka, the drunk, the drunk villain. From uh, and uh, I was like, okay, cool. I'm in my hero. Like that's all. Like if you're in LA and you don't really work on like uh, in Texas projects, you're just like, I'm glad I was in that one episode doing those three lines, and that's something I never thought would happen. So like playing Hawks was just, uh, kind of like uh, an upgrade uh, to that, <laughs> and like joining uh, something that was kind of when I got to it already, sort of a phenomenon. So like, how do I like rise to that occasion, I think was kind of my, my perspective awesome. on it. And uh, I saw that we had a little latecomer show up. Do you want to introduce yourself down there at the end of the table? Hello, my name is Trina Nishimura and I am Tardy. Uh, I play Jiro in my <laughs> So Trina, if you didn't hear the question that I asked earlier, it's um, when you started working on the first episode or whatever episode you started working on with the show and originally, uh, did you know how influential this show would be Excellent. towards both anime and the superhero community? Okay. Excellent. Okay. Cool. By the time it gets to me, I'm going to be ready. There you go. You got your answer. I thought it was to you. It's not to you yet? No, 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 no. no. Okay. I, I did not know. <laughs> Like, so, you know, I came along around season four, and by then it was already huge and established, and uh, I remember the director, Colleen Clinkenbeard, said, I got a guy I want you to read for. I want you to audition. I think he'd be a good fit for you. It's like, oh, sweet. And I saw the character design. It's like, oh, my God, I hope I get this guy. He's amazing looking. <laughs> just looking. Even if not knowing anything about the character, if you just see him, you just want to hug him. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, just yeah. so cute. So yeah, the director broke. does seem to... You know, take our personalities in the real world into account with her casting choices, which is interesting. Yes, yeah. right. That's right. Uh, Bring a part of yourself to the world. I mean, what does that say about us? What's up? Who is? Amanda's Jason could say that. <laughs> <laughs> Trina, it's now it's your turn. I did. I, uh, there have been rumblings, uh, like everyone else has said, that uh, my hero academia would be a massive big time deal, um, but you really just never know. Uh, I think um, I think I can confidently say that we are all just incredibly grateful uh, to the fandom and to all of you for caring and for loving these characters and for enjoying the show. Um, it's it's amazing and it's always remarkable to me when we go to a convention and people are like, "Oh my God, you did a good job!" and I'm like, "Really? Okay, great. Thank, thank you." you. <laughs> uh, so thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting, and we're all very grateful for you. So that's actually a really good lead-in to the next question that I had for you guys. Um, when you guys go to these events, to these conventions, to these fan expo things, are there any like favorite experiences you guys have had, a fan that's just really left a really good impression on you, or some interaction that you guys can remember that's always just going to stick with you, either from the My Hero fandom or from any of the fandoms that you guys have become a part of through your voice acting talents? Whoever wants to start. <laughs> um, I met uh, a young lady at, we, there are these specific My Hero conventions that kind of travel across the U.S. and we were doing those for a while. And I met a young lady that was cosplaying Suyu and she was like, I really want to go into the cosplay, but I'm afraid I've never done this before and I don't know if I'm going to lose. And I was like, you know what? Go out there and do your best because the worst thing that can happen is you don't win, but you still got out there and you did the thing. And I thought she was gonna go, okay, cool. She was there with her mom and like walk off. Well, it turns out the mom comes back and goes, she's actually doing it. She entered the contest. I'm like, oh, cool. She won. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. And it's that moment of like realizing like, oh gosh, not only are we voicing these heroes, but to some folks we are heroes. And so having to live up to that, I take that really seriously now. It's like, 
I'm a role model and I want to be good for you guys so that I'm just even a sliver as nice as to you. <laughs> uh, oh, over. You guys speak. You guys speak. You guys speak. You, you, I went first last time. You can go first, man. <laughs> Uh, well, you're number ladies, two. Ladies, uh, so number two, that no, means you've got to go. Ladies. Okay, fine. Um, thank you. Uh, one of the things that I've always loved about Midnight is that I believe that she really does embody, like, um, sex and body positivity. And I had uh, a woman come up to my table, and she was rocking a Midnight <laughs> cosplay. Like, bada bing, bada boom. And um, she came up to me and she just said, I want to thank you um, because she said, I've never felt comfortable cosplaying before because I don't fit the traditional kind of like image of what American culture tends to put forth as like the ideal female body. And she was like, it wasn't until I watched my hero and saw Midnight where I was like, oh, I, I want to do that. I think I can do that. I think I can feel beautiful doing that. And that was... <laughs> Made my heart explode. Uh, for me, uh, growing up, I didn't really see a lot of uh, actors who look like me in kind of sort of prominent uh, anime roles. Um, and Hawks is a pretty big role, probably one of my, pro pro it changed my entire career, so um, probably one of my biggest roles. So I think the thing that sticks with me the most is that when I see people who also look like me, who recognize that, like, me being in the position that I am also inspires them. You know, they want to pursue voice acting, and they're like, "This is something that I didn't think I could do because I didn't know it was possible." But then I saw you. Um, that lets me kind of—it's it's a very affirming feeling. Um, and knowing that, like, a character I play, actually, somebody came up to me today, and they were said like um, that uh, Hawks had helped them through like a lot of tough times in their lives, and like someone said Hawks had helped them start a small business, like just the, these things like that, like like that are like uh, how our work impacts the people who watch it that we don't even know. Um, I think it's like always kind of very gratifying uh, and affirming to me, uh, for me personally. Yeah, I gotta say, man, Hawks is one of my favorite characters on the show. So Thank you. I really appreciate what you bring to the role, man. It's so good. Thank you for watching. Yeah. <laughs> I had a one pretty specific, poignant interaction. Uh, and it wasn't uh, a My Hero interaction. It was from a show called Darker Than Black. I love um, that show. Were you the Thank main you. guy in that? I was the main guy. Oh my I was, God. I was I, Hay and uh, it was Alter Ego. Yeah. I freaking love that show. That uh, opening, the opening of that song is, uh, to that show is so good. I appreciate it. Howling, that. oh my gosh. Ah, my mind's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's the closest I'll ever come to playing Batman, in my estimation. Um, we'll be back after these messages. <laughs> um, anyway, I was doing a panel and um, a, a veteran stood up and came to the mic and he had a, a prosthetic limb and he explained to me that he had been um, hurt by an IED in Iraq, and he'd been in a hospital in Germany recovering, and he'd watched Darker Than Black, and that my performance had helped him get through it. That he felt he might die, and wow. you know, he didn't know who he'd be afterwards, but somehow that helped him. That's amazing. And that kind of blew my mind. Yeah, yeah, your impact. Wow. I had a similar interaction having to do with body, body positivity, but, uh, this kind of opened my eyes saying, you know, guys struggle with body image too. Mm -hmm. And so when a fan said, hey, when I saw your character, I felt confident enough to cosplay because, hey, he's a big guy, I'm a big guy, I can totally cosplay. It's like, honestly, it's not about size. You can, you can be any size and cosplay anything you want. That's the beauty. It's all up to interpretation, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You can even cosplay as your own original character and just put your creativity out there. So it really doesn't matter, right? Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> This guy. The no, Illuminati this mechanic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it really meant a lot. And I've had interactions, just like Jason, through the years where people tell you, it's like, I was, I was struggling, I had a hard point in my life, and your character in Fill in the Blank show totally just turned things around for me. It's like, that's icing on the cake for what we do. Absolutely. You don't think about that when we're voice acting and getting direction and doing the thing. Okay, that's great. Moving on to the next line. And then it comes out. It's yeah. out in the world and then we see the effect it has on you guys through social media interaction and of course the, the best way of all, conventions. So, thank you. I, uh, I, I, uh, I'm very fortunate to have been cast in the roles that I've been cast in 
Uh, I'm very uh, honored to be on the stage. Um, I am um, humbled and uh, I don't know who just sighed. I think that was Sabbath, but somebody just sighed real big in the microphone. It was awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm humbled. God. Uh, but yeah, no, I am. I am. I know it sounds cheesy. I know I'm like always like close to tears when I'm saying it. And, you know, F you if you don't like it. Like, that's how I feel. Um, and it's, it's incredibly humbling and I, I don't know how this happened and I don't know how long this wave will last and I'll ride it till it's over um, and be forever grateful. So, thank you. Yeah, all these stories are really good examples of things. There's like so many people that come up and they don't tell a story. Yeah. And they walk up and you can just see it in someone's face. Right. Yeah. And you don't have to say anything at all. And it's in that moment where you just take a moment and you breathe and you look at each other and you just have this understanding that you are part of this greater thing. Because these large shows like Dragon Ball and, and Micro Academia and One Piece and things like that, they've helped so many people get through so many different struggles uh, through bad things happening at home for worlds to escape into and uh, you know, a kid who was attacked by like 500 bees, like Africanized bees and he was allergic to bees and he no. thought of Vegeta powering up and he powered through it and uh, there's just, so these shows really are inspiring and it's the, it's the people that come up and, and you just lock eyes and you know. Yeah. That, uh, and I just end up saying like, hey, welcome to the club, guys. Like, we're all part of this. Like, yeah. we all have had this and we've all, actually all of us up here have been profoundly affected, as Trina said, like by these shows. It's changed our lives, so. Uh, yeah. yeah, you, uh, speaking of, you did that to me. So, Dragon Ball, I grew up, so it was cool being in the movie with you. Like, you were so good. I thank you, thank you so much. But, like, yeah, like, uh, like yeah, it's interesting how we also don't know the impact we have on each other, because so I remember we worked on it, and I heard your voice, and I was like, this is the voice of my childhood. Like, I'm, I'm directly interacting with it, and all, all of the, the, the memories I've made, all the friends I've made, is directly because of how that show is so interweaven in my community. So it's, 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 it's yeah, we're on together for us. Yeah, I would just add that, um, you know, the greatest gift that I've received is coming to these conventions, meeting all of you, and, and realizing that these stories and the characters have an impact. And like Chris said, that we're all part of something that's bigger than our individual selves, that the story, the narrative, the world that's created, that we can connect through that. And I think like connection is, you know, uh, something we all desperately want. Um, I've had so many, I don't have a specific one, but I've had so many conversations with people about uh, childhood trauma stuff, you know, using Todoroki as a, as a way to, as a way in to start that conversation, but uh, relationship with, with parents. Um, I had one guy in a panel that I was on that raised his hand and he said he's a, a social worker and he works with, with um, youth, you know, and, and that he uses the character of Todoroki to, to kind of start a conversation and connect with them. And, and it's just, you just never think, like, like Kyle said, you know, when we're in there, you know, a voice acting and taking direction and doing the thing, you know, you're so focused on that that you don't really think about those larger moments until you come to an event and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm a part of something that's that beautiful. So thank you guys for, for everything you bring to us as honestly, well. Honestly, honestly. That's why they're our heroes, man. Come on, give it up for them. That's great. Awesome. So I did want to kind of follow up on something that Zeno was talking about. Um, I know that you guys all get to do all these voiceover roles and everything, um, hopefully together uh, in the same room. And just listening to some of the moments. No, not not all the no. time. No. No. Okay. Never. Well, either way, um, I know that you guys have recorded some just legendary moments, both in the, in My Hero and in other other series that you guys have been a part of. Do you guys have a moment that just sticks out in your mind as like something you voiceover for either My Hero or something else that just has stuck with you and stayed with you throughout all the show that it's just like, that's the highlight, that's like the biggest moment I've done so far, like type deal? What do yeah. you got? United States of Smash. 100%. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That was like everything, uh, like my entire career, like flashed before my eyes as that was <laughs> happening. Like, it was the most epic moment and uh, it's really overwhelming because the, the show is, like when you're working on this show, you've got the music and the sound effects, and if you're 
if you're the last guy to record, which is sometimes the case for me, um, <laughs> you get to hear everybody else in your ear, and it's like you're in the show. So yeah. the feeling that you get watching it, we get to feel that as we're as we're recording it. Yeah. And it, you know, anime dubbing used to be considered like this kind of this lower rung of the acting, kind of the, the acting ladder or whatever it was. But now we have people on huge shows asking us how we can get, they can get into these things because. <laughs> I think it's the, the most amazing method of recording. When you go to record for a video game, sometimes you're lucky if they have a picture of the character. <laughs> yeah. <right. And laughs> but in this world, especially if you're affected by sound and, uh, and visuals, it's the coolest thing. You get to be in this massive world and you get to be a part of it. So that was just such an epic moment. Dude, I have to just piggyback on that. What you just described uh, is the experience I have now. And, and, and I've never put it into words that way. When I go into the booth to record for my, even if it's one line, I go in, you know, I, I'm looking at the anime, that world, and immediately I'm in that world and the music and the other voices. Um, I once had an um, experience where uh, I, I was, I came into the booth early to record and Josh Greeley was in there and I kind of tiptoed in and he was recording um, for Tokoyami and I just remember having this like kind of fan moment where I was like, oh my God, he's doing the voice, hit the voice, that's it, he's doing it, it's real, right here, like live. And I was like, oh my God, why, why I'm reacting like this. But I, I'm, I had once had uh, a fan, or uh, someone raise their hand in a panel and say, I don't really have a question, but, and it was a solo panel, was, this was years ago, I don't really have a question, but um, I just wanted to say it's really exciting to know that you're as big of a fan of the show as we are. And I, felt, I took that as a huge compliment because, you know, when I went back and watched it, I was like, oh, yeah, I see what everyone's talking about now. Um, so, yeah, that has nothing to do with the question, I don't think. I, the, uh, the one thing that comes to mind for me, there's so many moments, I can't really choose one, but the Deku um, Todoroki fight in the sports festival, it's just, yeah, it's epic, it's epic. And, you know, we felt, we, we knew it was kind of epic, and it was like, we feel that pressure. Um, with a show like this to to make sure that it is what it's supposed to be and that it hits the way it's supposed to hit So yeah, that's one that comes to mind. I love that moment. I remember watching it. I was like, Deku lost? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, right? I think for me, I, I would love to give you a see you moment, but what's hit me the most is I've been lucky enough to be a subdirector for Colleen mm -hmm. So I've kind of stepped into her shoes when she's not able to and I've gotten to do a couple episodes, of, but I got to do the Heroes Rising movie. We, we actually, we, it's really funny. We were on such a time crunch. We were using Chris's studio, and Colleen was in one studio, and I was in the other, and we would run back and forth and be like, okay, I got this person. Did you get this person? But one of my favorite moments from that, Bakugo and Suyu have a very relationship, right? And so, as a human, I always think of Bakugo as like, oh, it's Bakugo. Same. But when I got to work with Clifford, you know, I got to work with Clifford and that whole last scene, I'm not going to spoil anything, but at the end of Heroes Rising, Bakugo has a, a major change, right? Um, and getting to talk to Clifford as an actor and asking him, like, how do you want to approach this? And hearing him talk about Bakugo and how much he cared about Bakugo and how he wanted to approach this, it reminded me of myself and how I feel about Suyu. And that's when I realized we all have these relationships with these characters where it's like we want the best for them. We want them to just be this shining beacon to all of you. And that was really special. And it made me hate Bakugo less. <laughs> <laughs> what, wait, what was the question again? Uh, so it's, um, oh. if there's a big moment you had while doing voice out, voiceover work either on My Hero Academia or whatever else you guys have worked on that really like just stuck with you, like something like big, dramatic in the show or whatever. Mine is yet to come. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh. Yes, indeed. <laughs> mm. um. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, this probably isn't like my biggest moment, but I think my hero specifically, uh, the, the most recent episodes for Hawks has been like really, really fun to dig into. Um, yeah, yeah, yes, like, man. The, the, the sort of full face turn that he, that he kind of does with twice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't touch me! <laughs> uh, 
excellent work, buddy. <laughs> you, excellent, you as well. Excellent work. You as well. Uh, and it, there was like so many like, and Hawks has always kind of for me been a very like co like layered character. There was just like uh, it just wasn't always uh, in the on the surface. So like I think like I really really like especially when he when the eyes like I'm not a bad actor, huh? Like I really approached that. I was like, what does this guy sound like as a villain? You know? Um, and it was cool because the roles were really reversed. Um, and so that I think is like the the thing that I think stuck out to me the most is like as an actor was kind of. Balancing all of those like layers uh, when it comes to my hero specifically, it's really intriguing to hear your take on this. Um, <laughs> like when you say the roles were reversed, I was like, nah. Now we're really seeing the truth. Uh, but that was just my perspective. Um, I don't like Elizabeth said. I I really I feel fortunate in that. I feel like that moment for me, my my United States of Smash is is imminent and. Yeah. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> a couple more episodes, maybe. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, I've been waiting for 20 years for Gohan to be great. Again. Yes! <laughs> so, so, I know it's a My Hero panel, but you know, like, I'm talking no, about just... I was going to bring up Dragon Ball 2. That was going to be mine, too. But, yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, seriously. So Beast Gohan and all that. It's like... And Piccolo just lighting a fire under him and what some might see in an abusive way. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen Superhero, but you should. You should have by now. Yeah. Uh, if not, I think eventually, at least in Japan, the Blu-ray will drop. So hopefully soon after that. We don't have a release date, but I can't yeah. wait for it to be on home video so yeah. everyone can experience Dragon Ball Super Superhero. I think like... Getting to do like the last attack yell and yeah. that was like the defining. I used to like do those as a kid, you know, like yeah. on the playground. Yeah. So like so doing it in a professional <laughs> setting was really yes. cool. And I remember doing it and Chris being like, Ooh. and I was like, can I do another one? He was like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's, it's it, he was one of the first actors that, that I was working with on Dragon Ball that actually already knew everything. Like, I, like no, really, we had to usually explain the whole show to people, but he can't. I started explaining something. Like, Shut up, Chris! I already know the show. I've been watching this forever. Show. Yeah, I know what this is. I'm glad you told it. That's awesome. <laughs> a lot of people would let you explain everything, and they'd be like, "Okay, okay." Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "I, I know, the, I know the story." Um, yeah, but I think like just because of the history that I had for me is like one of the first anime I watched, and then be, getting to be in it in that capacity and doing the big yells like. I'll always remember that, I think. Yeah, that's awesome. It's like, that's like one of the, like, I, I usually give 100, but I think that was like a 200 percent. <laughs> literally a full force, everything I had. I've been planning on this my yeah. whole life. I think I like permanently, like, <laughs> changed my voice after that. Like, Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Chino, go ahead. No, no. possible. I predict uh, three, but... We'll see how many we can get through. Uh, so please, we can make it a little shorter if you can, but if you have a lot to ask, that's totally cool. Uh, One more I think if, if you're past the fifth person, you're done. Yeah, like, sit down. Yeah, I will warn you guys, we may not get through everybody, so just be prepared, all right? Be My gentle friends. with one another, be kind. Yes, please be kind, please be cool, um, and we'll start with you right here in the front. Go ahead. Yay, thank you. Um, first of all, Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Stand up, stand up! It's just, okay. It's foul. <laughs> Sorry. No. Um, okay. I'm 
just wondering, since you have a job of voicing things that other people wrote, I wonder if you have ever written a story yourself. Chris, don't you have a, a comic book out? Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, you have a, don't you have a comic book on the way? I, no? yeah, actually, it did come out. It's called, it's called Okratron. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> and the Wrath of Sawbot, which is a play on my name, because that's how people pronounce it. Um, I had, I've never had so much fun uh, working on something because I've never, I, I don't write anything. Monica writes stuff, you guys all write stuff, Emily Needs writes, but they all write things. I don't normally write stuff. But it was kind of fun working with a, a, with a creator to come up with a comic book. I, thank you for bringing that up. I never talk about that. Yeah. I probably should. Yeah, yeah. Everybody go buy yeah. his comic book. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else on? I write stuff. Honestly, when I, when I was uh, much younger, um, I'm, I've been a huge RPG nerd for my entire life, and um, I used to write fan fiction of, um, <laughs> of uh, Final Fantasy, like Celis and Locke writing love letters back and forth to each other as they traveled and were apart from each other. Is that FF9? Huh? It's FF9, right? No, it's a, what, 6-6 six, six in, six. in the U.S. and 2-2 two, two in Japan? 3 in Japan? Oh, yeah. Representing the R-rated hero very well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was like 11, so it was very PG love letters. <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's fair. I would, uh, I would do like, uh, I, there's a forum I would, I would frequent uh, as a teenager, and you would do this thing called role playing, where you and like yeah. 10 other yes. people online would come together and make a story. Together. Yes. Like oh, in cool. separate posts, like from your character's perspective, and I used to do that a lot, like as a kid. Like that's what I would. I would spend hours in the roleplay section of a particular site, of, uh, like a, a nerd site, like a, for a video game. I'm not saying it specifically because I don't, I don't know if any of you know me on there. Um, <laughs> What's your username? My username was Endless Warrior Sora, so that should be a hint. Uh, anybody who was on that site. Uh, but yeah, that's what I used to do. As a writer. I wrote a really, really dark play in college that was produced. Um, I think it was called The Needle Lies. It was, it was uh, <laughs> that's yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> you, what did you that's think that was? It was called The Needle Lies. Oh. It was about an, an addict uh, girlfriend of a oh. dude who was a lot like me. It was not based on anything in real life. <laughs> Are you crying? A little. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I cry all the time. My tear ducts aren't seared shut permanently. <laughs> You're in a safe space, sir. It's all good. Thank you, Kyle. Don't. Thank you for your question. Um, wait, yeah, I just have to plug this question. really quick. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I have like a bunch of documents that I've started writing stories, and they're just like, you know, just sitting there waiting to be finished or whatever. Uh, but I have to plug, I don't know if you guys know Emily Neves, but she plays Aerie in My Hero Academia. Um, <laughs> But she's actively writing. She just got published in a literary magazine. So you guys should go to her wow. her Twitter and find this awesome essay. It's called The Tragedy of the Rose Marquis Seal. Go read it. It's awesome. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you for your question. That's We're going to go move on to the next one. Go for uh, it. First of all, I want to say you guys are like really good with your acting and everything. And um, my question is, how did you guys feel after shooting a season five? Season five? Uh, I felt awesome. Todoroki got to kind of like, you know, express himself a bit more to, to dear old dad a little bit, you know, and like, I was really there for that. Um, I was, it was complicated, but I was, I was there for it. So it was, it was awesome. I was like, dang, they're not going to be ready for season six. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a totally different season than this. Um, I like that Hawks got to talk to Deku. I, like, I don't think I've ever, like, he's ever interacted with, like, Deku or All Might or, like, any of the heroes. He's usually just kind of, like, doing his own thing or, like, chilling with the villains, so. Um, chilling, with chilling with the villains. <laughs> him, him and Dobby's talk show. Um, <laughs> I would love it. <laughs> or they should have a sitcom. Right. <laughs> They're roommates. <laughs> right. Low-rate apartment. <laughs> we just do not get along. Working as skater waiters. <laughs> I keep burning my uniform. <laughs> You can't find anything that fits over your wings. Right, yeah, there's feathers everywhere. It writes itself. Yeah. <laughs> I felt very fulfilled because I got to say one of my favorite lines um, and what I personally have been thinking to All Night, which is get a new ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> your phone call is here. Yes. <laughs> All right.
Thanks for the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're going to move on to the next one. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure I didn't answer any of your questions. <laughs> I want to say th thank you so much for being here and spending time with us interacting. And my question is that yes. I, I don't even get this a lot, but what is a quirk would you like to have in real life? Mine would be illusion. Oh, that's cute. What quirk would we want in real life? Real life yeah, I think that was the question. Yep. It's always teleportation. It's such an OP one, but like, uh, it's such a, it's not fair, but like, I also would want to like teleport objects. Like, I think that would just be cool too. Like, it's like an object, but it works on myself as well. Um, so that way I can teleport things as well to myself. I, I, want that. I want that too, so I don't have to go to the airport. You know what I'm saying? I can just appear where I want to be with all, my stuff. We could all go to lunch in Italy right now. And yeah. like, come I mean, that'd be a little overwhelming. There's a lot of us, but how cool would that be? Like, that's not overwhelming. They got big restaurants there. <laughs> Instant transmission. I, I, uh, this isn't necessarily what I would want to have, but I feel like my real life quirk, if I were like to really base it off of me, anybody who knows me well or has directed me knows that I burp a lot. <laughs> I don't know why, uh, but I do. And so I feel like my quirk would be that I can use my burps to either like push myself backwards or to like push my enemies away from me. Man, I did not know this about you and I love knowing this. This is awesome. We were at dinner two nights ago and like the, the weird thing is you don't realize that it's coming from her. You think like, she, she, the, the burps don't sound like what burps. she looks like. They're not cute little burps. They're like... They're, yeah, they're kind of like demon burps. <laughs> they're they're kind of chunky in texture. I like to think of them as round and voluminous. <laughs> <laughs> There's jagged edges in there, too. Though. I don't know what's making those little, you know. Uh, I, think burp, I think the topic of burps has hijacked your question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it hijack any question? <laughs> yes, yes, any question. All right, well, thank you for your question. I saw a god quirk, you know, like, oh, god complex. <laughs> <laughs> I want to use quirk. I thought you said a dog quirk, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's even better than my answer. Testing, is this thing on? Testing, you, would you really want testing, one, one, two, three, is this thing on? Oh, that'd be terrible. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, uh, I was like, where is that voice coming from? Yeah, I was like, that's supposed to come from. All right, we got another question. Yeah, first here. off, uh, arigato gozaimasu for your uh, work on My Hero, or in Japan, boku no, uh, what's it called in Academia. Japan? Yeah. Hello? And my question is, uh, uh, two questions. Uh, first one is, if there ever was to be a My Hero Academia crossover with Demon Slayer, um, what would you want there to be? I would want Deku um, to be uh, cousins with uh, Tanjiro, um, and I, want, would, I would want Eri and Nezuko to be best friends, and then I would want a demon-infused um, Nomu. Um, what would you want? And the second one, who do you want hey, to do the- Hey, my friend, let me just, there's so many people, yeah, you don't have much time, let's stick to yeah. the question. question. Okay, my only hope is that uh, Bakugo is the one that has to have the bamboo harmonica in his mouth. <laughs> yes. yes, agreed. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like that answer. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, Hots would probably be some kind of wind Hashira and some kind of something like that. Aren't you already in that other... Yeah, I, I think I yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so maybe your characters would, I don't know, be roommates in, in a low rent <laughs> apartment. And they're they both catering. <laughs> thank you for your question. Awesome, thank you for your question, man. We're going to move on to the next one. What do you got? Uh, hi, uh, so I want to know, um, what's your favorite thing about your guys' character, and what's one thing you would change about them? That's a good one. More All right, fine, time. fine. Um, I like his layers. I like how um, how, how deep he is. Um, it's it's really both challenging and gratifying as an actor to have a character in, in in a cartoon effectively be as deep as someone you might know in real life. That's uh, that makes things easier and, and harder at the same time, which is a great thing. Um, and as far as changing something about him, I guess I. I change whatever messed him up in the first place, just to see who he might be. Agreed. Agreed. I think uh, Fat Gum should be a teacher. I mean, he might as well, right? That and more screen time. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that too. That's that too. <laughs> um, I, I really like uh, kind of similar to uh, Jason's answer. I like Hawks's layers. He's always. I think he's kind of like a similar to Davion, but on the opposite kind of spectrum. Uh, where he doesn't really let a lot of his trauma, it's not out there. 
Um, he kind of sort of keeps it kind of inside. Um, and uh, I think what I would change is I would like, I don't know, more fights. I kind of want to see him like do more than what he's done so far. I think like uh, the fight with Twice was like the most we've got to see from him. Um, so I want to see something like bigger than that. Like what's Hawks looks like when he goes like all out? Like I don't know what that looks like. Yeah, we need a Hawks prequel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hawks prequel. I need a rematch with Dobby. That's what I really need. <laughs> I would take that, man, please. That's... <laughs> that was a pleasure. Like seriously, you and I don't, I mean, we, despite being in those sequences together, like the fact that we got to play off each other like yeah, that. Yeah, it was really was, cool. It was really awesome. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. More, more of that, please. Please. I really like that Jiro has a lot of leather jackets. <laughs> <laughs> What do you change to leather pants as well? Uh, I think the only thing I would change uh, as far as her aesthetic goes is I'd probably add more fur. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for your question. You. I think we got time for about one or two more. So That's we'll go with it right here. You got the mic okay? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Never you haven't seen see now. I love your Doritos cosplay. Yeah, we can trade. You can <laughs> Was that nacho cheese or? Doritos. What's your question? He's like, I just want to look. I didn't think I'd get this far. He's frozen. Hi, so, so my question is, uh, can all of you guys do a quote in your character voice? Oh. And, and, and Zeno has to, to do a uh, hunter from Owl House. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's, I'll start. I am here! <laughs> hey, Midoriya, what are you all my secret love child? <laughs> well, with that attitude, you'll never be popular, Bakugo. <laughs> That's incredibly naive, my boys. <laughs> that turns me on! <laughs> I discovered these things called wolves and I've seen you in pictures, but uh, you're way grosser in person. <laughs> Booty incoming! <laughs> yes! Opinions are like mixtapes. I don't want to hear yours. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, man. Oh, that was awesome. All right, we got probably time for one more question. But if you didn't, if we didn't get to your questions, you can come up to our yes. tables and ask us yes. still. Yeah, we'll they're, they're going to be around still for the rest of the con, so feel free to come up and ask them afterwards. Hi, um, Hi. what's your honest opinion about all of the characters in My Hero Academia? Wow. <laughs> well, let's start from the beginning. Um, oh, man. Uh, my alphabetically, it's, it's, in here. it's a big answer. <laughs> What if we did our honest opinion about our characters instead of the whole cast? Does that work? Cool. I'll uh. start. Uh, I love Chiro. I love her leather jackets. Uh, no, I think she's really awesome. I love that she is, um, I love that she's driven. I love that she's talented. I love that she doesn't give up about anybody's opinion. Uh, I think that that uh, should be more prevalent for young people everywhere because who cares what other people think? I don't. Uh, so I love her. That is my honest opinion about her. I think fat absorption is an awesome quirk. <laughs> Especially when, you know, as big as he is, he can transport people. You know, they're just kind of s surrounded by his blubber. <laughs> and they're like, okay. And they're like, it's like fat taxi, right? You know, like, gotta pay for that ride. And like, no, no, it's, it's epic. I, I love the character. Again, I just wish he had more screen time. He's yeah. a side character. I, again, I love his complexity, his mysteriousness, and uh, and I wish he had more screen time too. And uh, and I also love how he doesn't give a f. Uh, I just wish he fought more. Uh, he's black, in my opinion, as well. positive and I feel like she has taught me like if you're gonna you know be passionate about something don't go halfway go full <laughs> I love Suyum um I love
love her, uh, the way she stands up for her friends because I am very much the same way, but what I really love about her is that she has the ability, people can look at her and see themselves in her. I've had people that are non-binary, people that have autism, they're like, I think she might be non-binary. I think that they might be, have autism. And I think that that's really cool because uh, she's one of those characters that you can really kind of see yourself in. And I love that. Aww. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, to say I love Todoroki is, yeah, an understatement. I, 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 um, I, I love the fact that he's a, a fierce competitor, a fierce fighter, um, that he's resilient, that he doesn't let, uh, his past, uh, you know, keep him down. I love that, and then I love at the, at the same time that there's an innocence, there's sort of an, a naivete there that just makes him really endearing, and, and you know, he takes things so literally. People ask me, hey, how do you approach the comedy? And I'm like, what comedy? I don't approach it at all. <laughs> I don't approach it at there's, all. There's no comedy, there's, I don't approach it at all. He's just really being, if I smile, they'll die? Like, he's really asking me. <laughs> uh, I love All Might because he reminds me of being a dad, and, uh, he reminds everybody that you can be somebody else's All Might too, if you want to, because he's obviously not, uh, well, I mean, in my mind, but he's obviously not Midoriya's dad, uh, so we know yet. Um, <laughs> but I, I like how inspirational he is. I like that he's he smiles, um, and in his own words, he smiles to to show, like, the pain of heroes, so like, and then he hides that pain that's inside of himself so he can sh like, make everyone else happy. I think that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. I love him. Yeah. He's awesome. Woo! Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for your question. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much for your questions, guys. Uh, I think we are just about at time. So anybody else who didn't have a question, the My Hero cast are going to be out over in the convention hall doing autographs and everything still. So please go visit them very soon. But don't leave yet, because I was actually going to ask you guys if we could do a couple things real quick at the end. Uh, first thing is I know that we had somebody missing from our, from our uh, friend group today, and I just wanted to see if we could record a message for Justin and let him know that we miss him. Is that okay? You guys cool with that? All right, cool. So everybody say, we miss you, Justin! Do I have to? We miss you, Justin! <laughs> oh, oh, it's already recording? Oh, here. Right. We'll do one more thing. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. We miss you, Justin! <laughs> And I was wondering, if All Might, if you could lead us in a call of Plus Ultra. Okay. Everybody, right. as we leave, let's remember to go beyond Plus Ultra!